Greetings and welcome to one day closer to the big day of when we celebrate Christmas. Oh boy, it's been busy out at the mall. People have been coming and going and doing all kinds of things. For those of you who don't know, we are doing a display out in the Steinbach Mall and giving away hundreds and hundreds of evangelistic booklets with coloring books and discipleship materials. Things are going all over the place. People are hauling away and we've been even giving away, and I know it looks backwards, this whole idea of the pure gift of love. For those of you who are praying, uh, yesterday the pure gift of love, uh, probably starting today, is going throughout Woodridge it's going throughout Marchant, it's going throughout La Brokery, and it's going throughout uh, St. Anne. So pray for that as uh, we continue to give out the gospel, the light of Jesus Christ around our community. So it's going out. And not only is the word going out at the mall, it's going out in the newspaper, and it's going out in a variety of communities. And continue to pray for that. And as God provides we're able to give give and keep giving because you know freely you have received now freely give amen and so we're glad that you've joined us at discipleship empowerment study as we're going through the book of first john looking at the overall theme of the theme love you probably have noticed that everybody are on the radio and television and different things anytime that they talk about christmas most people are talking about love and we need to talk about because it's the gift of love the pure gift of love that god gave through his son to us that who would ever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting isn't it amazing this is the gift of god to us jesus his son given to us to be the sacrificial lamb and also not only to die and shed his blood for us, but resurrected from the dead so that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can also dwell in us. And we need to thank God for that. You know, sometimes we think that Christmas is all about just giving and giving and giving, but sometimes we need to reflect on what God has given, given, and given, if you know what I mean. And so we're glad that you've joined us today. And as we move along through this week, and as I say, continue to pray for us later on this morning, we will be going back out to the mall and uh, getting things ready to distribute and to hand out and, and to encourage and to pray. You know, thank you for all of you who have dropped in and said hello to us and are praying for us. We're grateful for that and just ask that the Lord would continue that we can work together as a team to shed forth the light of Jesus Christ. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to enlighten you as you walk in the Word and let the Word walk its way out in you. Amen. So we love you. Let's head over to First John chapter 3, and we're going to look at verses 10 to 15. Now, I know uh, yesterday, for some, it might have been a little bit of a challenge. You know, you can see pictures click on and pictures click off, who's on and who's not. And sometimes when you talk about the subject of sin, people don't particularly like that. But we need to de realize that this whole area of a sin, that the love of God was to be able to come and destroy the roots of sin, destroy the works of the devil, that Christ had came to manifest himself so that we could be born of God, that we could be children of God. And that's so amazing what God has given and continues to give it through his love. Well, today, as we move on from verses 10 to 15, uh, John is going to clarify that one of the biggest things that, that he gives through his love, the love of God gives, is that we're to love one another. And uh, that's kind of the fruit that's supposed to come out of loving God. When you love God, you're going to love one another. And one of the hardest things to do is not just to love one another in the church, but to love one another as our neighbors and to love our enemies. <laughs> Sometimes I jokingly say when I'm handing out tracts, 
you know, uh, at the at the mall and booklets, I will say to them, well, you know, maybe, you, and call one will say, well, maybe you've got some other friends that you would like to give, not just receive them yourself, but take them along to give to others. And then sometimes, jokingly, I will say to parent, well, they'll say to me, well, I've got not, no one to give one to. And I said, well, then I would speak up and say, well, do you have any enemies? Maybe you should give some to them too, you know. Really, this is a time that, you know, the love of God should be shown and should be exemplified, should be manifested, right? All these words that we've been reading in John uh, to one another. And we're going to see that, that as he continues on, moving from this whole idea of sin and being born of God and born of the Spirit, and that the love of God is to be there, and now he's going to bring us in to an illustration about how we are to love one another and how somebody that was in the Old Testament forgot the principle of love and killed his brother. You know, and John is going to pick that up. The the first John is going to sh show that as an illustration. Sometimes we don't physically kill each other. Hopefully most of the time we don't physically kill each other. But one of the things that I've learned throughout my history of being married and working with people and all those things, how destructive words can be. That when we speak words, that they can kill the very spirit in people. They can destroy and hurt and maim. And so often we may not be the physical ones who put someone to death, but sometimes our lack of love coming forth from our words can have devastating effects. So let's go over into verse 10 of chapter 3 as we begin. Paul, or John again, uses this little phrase, this little um, description of who we are, calling us children. And he says, In this, that the children of God and the children of, of the devil manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So there we get this this illustration that is going to begin to to build up where where john has just talked about sin and he talked about how christ needs to be manifested in us and in others so that sin could be overcome that the things of the devil could be put the works of the devil could be destroyed and also that our sins could be taken away while well, we get this word coming up again that what he says here, children, you're going to have to decide. You're either children of God or you're children of the devil. Now you're saying, well, how can you, you know, share such a message during this Christmas season? But God, John, John really wanted to, God through John, really wanted to make it clear that if you want to experience the fullness of the love of God, is that you need to be partakers of God and not partakers of this world that you're to manifest Christ's righteousness in our lives. And so that's why he says, he says, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. You can figure out who the children of God are and who, you, who the children of the devil are. And he said, you're going to see that this is manifest. They're going to come up. It's going to be quite obvious, the difference between the two. But then he goes on, but whoever... And it's interesting that whoever covers both the children of God and the children of the devil. Now that may sound strange, but the whoever is whosoever will. It's everybody. Whosoever will make that step. Whosoever will change positions. This is what you're going to reap. And this is what you're going to see. He says, whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. We need to not only, and I like this word practice because it's something that doesn't mean that it falls out of heaven one time and then we have it and then we don't have to worry about it anymore. It's like the journey of sanctification. It's an ongoing journey. It's something that we need to work at during our walk with Jesus Christ. Sanctification is a process of being made clean. Well, righteousness is also a process of being made righteous in Jesus Christ, being made righteous in who Christ is, and to practice that righteousness 
amongst one another. Don't just keep that righteousness for yourself and say, well, long as I stay in my house, I'm, I'm, I'm living out the life of righteousness for Jesus. No. John is saying, take that righteousness and practice it. Well, you know, when you're in the mall doing what we're doing, you get opportunities to practice righteousness. Because some people are happy with what you're doing, and fortunately most of them are, you know, very happy. But then there's a few that are not happy. But you need to continue, whether you like it or not. You should, out of the love of God, continue to practice righteousness. You know, continue to do what is right, even though everybody else may be going the opposite direction. The ways of the world, the ways of the devil are going in that direction. But we who are children of God are going in a new direction, and that new direction is exemplified by us walking in righteousness. It's an amazing thought. And that we should be practicing it just as an athlete practices day after day. You know, to run a 100-yard dash. You know, I've told you this before. Can you imagine an athlete for four years practicing the 100-yard dash so that he can go to the Olympics and hopefully while at the Olympics in front of all kinds of people that his practice would pay off and that somehow he would be able to run the 100-yard dash in less than 10 seconds. Can you imagine that all your focus is focused on 10 seconds? But sometimes I think about that because our focus should be focused on the moment, the very moment when someone comes into our pathway. And at that moment, are we practicing righteousness? You know, I, I, it's amazing when you drive or when you do other things or you're amongst people, how many people don't practice righteousness? You know, they practice hatred. They practice animosity. You know, they do these things, you know, like to say a positive word is very difficult for some people. But we need to counteract that. We need to be as children of the light to push back the darkness. And the way we push back is by showing them love. Why does it push back? Because the promises of God says that love never fails. And if it never fails, whether they're angry at you or hostile at you or hate you, whatever, just keep loving them. Keep loving them. You know, I was talking to a mother and a grandmother the couple days ago, and she was in tears at the table, and she said, you know, I would love to give these kids out, to these booklets out to my grandkids, but my daughter won't even let me come to the house. She won't even let me talk about the Word of God. She won't even let me come near them. And she, used, she said she used to be a Christian, and she used to love the Lord, and now she hates everything about Christianity. And I'm thinking, that is so sad. And then she was saying, what do I do? And I said, you just keep loving. Just keep loving. Keep practicing righteousness and keep practicing love. And the Bible says, love never fails. It may take a long time to penetrate that old hard ground or that rocky ground or that weed, the ground full of weeds. But somewhere along the line, if we believe that love never fails and keep applying it, keep applying it, keep applying it, keep practicing it, keep practicing it. And it's something we need to keep doing. And that's why I underline this word practice because it's so important that as he talks to us that we Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor he who does not love his brother. So one of the hardest things that you're going to find to do, and I think that's why it's so difficult, because when Jesus boiled down all the commandments, he boiled on the two. He said, okay, here's what it's all about. He said, love God and love your brother as yourself. The way you love yourself, that's the way you're to love your brother and sister. And Jesus said, if you do these things, if you just do these two things, well, you know and I know, those are probably the hardest two things to do. A lot of people don't want to love God. They hate God. They're upset with God. They're mad at God. But then how can they have the fellowship of God in such a state? Not realizing that in spite of all what they have maybe gone through that created that animosity and that hatred, that filtering through that was the love of God. If they would have just reached out and to realize that we are also the vessels and channels of God 
to love others. One of the biggest evangelistic tools that we can use is to love God. That's why we keep talking about the pure love of God. I want, I believe the Holy Spirit specifically said to me, put in the word pure. There's a lot of different kinds of love out there, but we need to experience the pure love of God. And that's why he said that he who does not love his brother. Then he goes on in verse 11 and gives us kind of the illustration. He says, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning. Isn't it interesting? This idea of beginning is found throughout. It's one of those threads that go through uh, the, the whole picture of what John is trying to talk about love. He says, from the beginning there was love. You know, we were, we were created by God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, by love. We were disobedient to God because we disobeyed against what he had called us to do out of love. And so he says right from the very beginning, and he's taking us back. He says, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And it's interesting that he goes on, that he said, you know, we should love one another. You know, First Thessalonians talks about the one another factor over and over again. You know, this is something key to the discipleship walk is that we need to love one another and, and uh, practice it. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fly off the handle once in a while. You're going to react sometimes negatively to somebody. And I've done that too. I, you know, sometimes in my journey, I should be more loving and sometimes I'm not practicing the loving part where I'm practicing the, the selfish, oh, you hurt me kind of thing, and I'm going to get you. Well, I know none of you are like that, but you think it in your mind sometimes. And that's not what it's all about. We're to love one another. No matter what they do, no matter what kind of lifestyle they live, no matter how they have rejected Christ and rejected you and rejected all that you believe you keep loving them and eventually it's going to penetrate I have seen people you know who have been hostile to me over the years and I just keep loving them and loving them and loving them you know what and they change their position they know that I could only do the love of God because of the love of God is in me there's no other way my nature would be <laughs> to come after you. But now my new nature is the love of God. And so he goes on here and he talks about that this love was there right from the very beginning. And he says in verse 12, not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. So now he's going to give us an illustration, you know, where he says, you know, remember that illustration? Everybody said, yeah, most of the Jewish people would check. Yeah, remember right at the very beginning, Cain and Abel, the children started to get into the place where they were not practicing love, not in the place where they're not properly serving God. And when they brought their offerings, there was some hostility and anger towards God. And sometimes that hostility and anger Instead of taking it out on God, we take it out on each other. And that's what Cain did. Instead of confronting God and saying, you know, you loved his offering more than you love mine. Instead of hearing out what God was trying to say to Cain, he took out that frustration and anger on his brother. And if you were to go over into Genesis chapter 4, where this account is given, it's interesting in Genesis chapter 4, where we're... You know, the Lord warns Cain ahead of time. Cain. Look what he says in verse 7. If you do well, will you not be accepted? Won't, won't you be accepted if you do that which is right? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. Cain, be careful because sin lies at the door. And it desire is for you, but you should rule over it. And the only way you can rule over these desires is to walk in the love of God. But then Cain turns around and says, well, you know, when it comes to the place, he kills his brother. His brother's blood is shed on the field. It cries out before God. 
And then even God comes to Cain again. Can you imagine this kind of conversation going on? But that's what the Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit is warning. You know, sin lies at the door, Cain. Be careful. You need to rule over it. But instead of ruling over it, Cain now begins to talk to his brother Abel, and, and there is a hostility. And then Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. And then when God confronts him about it, what does Cain do? He turns around and says, am I my brother's keeper? You know, that's a very famous verse. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? The Lord already knew where Abel was. But did Cain know where Abel was? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is, yes, you are. And that's what John is going back to. You have a responsibility to your brothers and sisters. And the responsibility is to keep loving them. Love never fails. And you say, Pastor, you're asking us to do things that are impossible. Yes, it is impossible in your own strength. But if you're praying each day and asking the Holy Spirit to, to fill you and guide you, you know, I, I've learned my prayer time in the morning is becoming longer and longer because I'm asking God to cover things that will come up, things that I'm going to be involved with. Cover it with His love. Cover it with His precious blood. Give me wisdom. Give me direction. And so John is taken back and says in verse 12, Not as Cain who was of the wicked one. Remember we turned just before that there was going to be children of, of God and children of the devil. But Cain was, was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. The issue was that came up is that because God had asked them both to walk in righteousness, one chose not to, and the other one chose to. So it goes back. That's why we need to put on the breastplate of righteousness so that it would exemplify, it would, it would show forth that we are righteous. And that's why we need to practice righteousness because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. That's what was made in the difference. Abel was practicing righteousness. Noah was known as righteousness. Abraham was known as righteous. You know, God looked at people and saw the righteousness in them and that they were practicing righteousness. That didn't make, you know, mean that they didn't make mistakes, but their goal was to become better and better and better in righteousness. And the only way you can become better in righteousness is to receive the love of God. He goes on and says in verse 13, Do not marvel, my brother, if the world hates you. Don't marvel. Don't be so shocked that now that you are a believer in Christ, you know, don't think that everybody's just going to jump up and down and say, Well, praise God, he's a Christian. You know, I'm so excited about that. Well, let me tell you that the world probably is not going to love you. And John says, don't, you know, don't be in a place of marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. Don't, don't think about, wow, you know, wh why are they hating me? Because that's the way the devil wants to do. He wants to bring destruction and hatred and animosity. And that's why we're wanting to keep telling them, you know, come to the mall. I got 50,000 of these things. Come to those who are close by. And take some and share the pure love of God with people. Because there's so much animosity and anger and hatred out there. And he says, you know, don't be surprised if the world hates you. If they do all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake, Jesus says. This is what's going to happen. But in spite of that, you love them. You love them. You keep loving them because the most powerful penetrating light that you can hit them with is the light of love. I'm praying every day for Samson. He's still captive. We still don't know where he is. You know, it's day number probably 16 now that he has been hidden away and in prison. And I'm praying that he will be a light, a light that will push back that evil darkness of that evil generation and that the love of God will shine forth. That no matter what they do to him. 
they will not be able to break the spirit of love of God in his life. That's what I pray. I prayed that this morning. You know, I, I, I just pray that somehow in that deep valley, that the righteousness of God will continue to rise up with him and that he would be able to be strengthened and know that the love of God is what is going to overcome this evil military regime and all the, the, the wickedness that comes with it. But to love, he goes on, says, don't you know that the world's going to hate you? Can you put up in your hand and say, yeah, I've experienced that. They don't, they don't really like it. My family, some of my, you know, you could say some of your children don't like it. Some of your grandchildren don't like it, whatever. There will be people out there. Your neighbors not, are going to hate what you represent. Not necessarily because of who you are, but because of who is in you. Even the religious people hated Jesus. He goes on in verse 14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brother. How do we really know if we have eternal life? John says, how do we know that? He says, when you have love for the brethren, you will know that you have passed from death. Death is because we were dead in trespasses and sin. We were dead in our wickedness. We were dead in the things, you know, when it comes to Christ. But what is going to be revealed, what is going to make the difference, you know, is that you're going to see that you have love for your brother. I remember that the day that that happened in my life. It actually happened. When, when somebody, be, we, I was working in the, my front yard in Port Stanley, Irene was out there, and someone began to come towards Irene and began to say things against her. And I was using a shovel, and I began to pick up that shovel, and I began to move that way. Because my old nature was, is, you know, the old Humphreys tradition, <laughs> you, you want to fight? We're in. <laughs> and uh, I remember going towards this guy and I'm, I'm ready to intervene. I'm ready to do what needs to be done. And all of a sudden I lay the shovel down and I just began to speak words of love to that guy. And he backed right off from Irene. And he, then he just turned away and walked away. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit said to me, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Do you see the power of love? You were going to use the power of anger. But I wanted you to see the power of love. And I turned to Irene and I said, Do you see what just happened? And she says, Yeah. What happened to you? Because she knew my nature. My nature was pretty violent. I was an angry guy. <laughs> Even though I was a Christian, I still had angry stuff in me that needed to be dealt with. But something clicked that day. And then I knew that the love of God works differently than the love of man. And that's why he says here, he says, because we love the brethren, he who does not love his brethren, brother abides in death. Look at this. I, I mean, these are words that are going to hit you right between the eyes. I don't know how I was to make it softer for you. In fact, I can't. He says, if you don't love your brother... You abide in death. There's our word abide. Remember our word abide keeps going through. We get the word abide. We get the word manifest. We get these words love. And here he's saying, if you can't love your brother, then what abides in you is death. But if you love your brother, what abides in you is life. Well, you know, that's something I've been praying a lot about and continue to pray a lot about in this season. That love would never fail. That no matter what people do, how they slander, how they react, that we can continue to love. Why? Because we have eternal life. And someday soon we're going to continue on in that eternal life where we're with Jesus face to face. We're not to abide in the principles of this world which bring about death. We're not to abide in the, in the spirit of revenge and animosity and all those things. We're to abide in love. Then he goes on to verse 15. Whoever hates his brother is... <laughs> wow, you know, John, 
come on, show us a little bit of mercy here. <laughs> he's writing a book on love, but he's just going to, he's just going to let us have it. If you're not abiding in love and that, that with of God, then you're abiding in the love of the world. And, and now he goes on and whoever hates his brother is a murderer. I, uh, that is that when I was studying this, that just about blew me out of the water. What? It it shows you know how sin is all equal. He says you know you're equal to a murderer, when you hate your brother. You're equal in the in the context. You're equal to being. Why does he say murder? Because Cain could not accept the love of God, and because Cain could not accept the love of his brother, Abel, he murdered him. He murdered him. And now John is going to take this to a little bit higher spiritual level and says, if you can't have love for your brother, and you're not going to, first of all, you're not going to have eternal life. And second of all, you're a murderer. You know, when I looked at these verses, I thought, Jim, you're preaching this the, like the couple days before Christmas. But maybe this is what God wants us to hear a couple days before Christmas. That we need to practice. We need to turn up the heat on love. Wherever we go, gift shopping, whatever we're doing, we're not screaming and yelling at each other and doing all kinds of things and, and saying negative things to each other. You know, but we're just turning up the heat of love. Because love never fails. And we don't want to be considered murderers like Cain. But we want to be considered righteous as like Abel. Can you see what John is trying to do? He's trying to take us down into the very depths to, uh, of understanding so he can take us back up to the very heights. Because what does he do here? He says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him no man no person has eternal life if we're a murderer abiding in him so that means you're not grafted in you're not part of the vine you're not part of the love circle of jesus christ and so today as we can continue to to walk our way through this we have to ask the holy spirit how can we love our fellow brother our fellow man how can we love our enemies how can we do that? And the only way we can do it is through accepting the abiding love of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray today that this, this message will shake you up as it shook me up. And as I go out today, I know God's going to bring things across my, uh, my way so I can practice this. The unique thing about God is when you learn something from his word, he gives you opportunities to practice it. That's the scary part about the whole thing, you know, is to practice the love of God and to practice it in such a way that it brings forth the righteousness of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that all that John is saying, that you're saying through John, is to try to show forth that your righteousness and your love. Neither one of them will fail. But Lord, both of them we need to practice. And we need to practice it one to another. Lord, if we really believe in, in uh, heaven and we really believe that you're calling people to heaven, we need to practice love. We need to practice righteousness. And Lord, so that your kingdom can grow. Lord, if we're really praying about revival, Lord, for our country, for our church and our community, it's got to start with us. And Lord, it starts with us by practicing our love, the love you've given us to each other. Lord, it's got to continue on in walking in righteousness. And so, Lord, I pray for each one that listens today that you would be glorified in their lives and the things that we do. Lord, as we go out, even into the mall, Colwyn and I today, tomorrow and the rest of the days of this week, Lord, that we will be able to continue to show forth your love because you are telling us that love never fails. As we hand out these booklets, we're handing them out not because we wrote them, we're handing them out to let people know that you love them and that you died for them, you shed your blood for them, that they could have the, the forgiveness of sin and the resurrection power in their lives. Oh, God. 
And we continue to pray for those in Ukraine. Lord, lift them up like Anya and Tanya and their families. Oh, God, give them strength. Lord, we continue to lift up Samson, oh, God, asking, Lord, that, that this, even this passage of Scripture, Lord, that he would be able to fulfill it in his life, him and his wife, his children, the church there, that no matter what the enemy will throw at them, they will stand in your love and in your righteousness. And so, Lord, we pray that you would speak these words into our lives, not just to be hearers, but to be doers also now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. And I hope that that's kind of like for me, just like it has been for you, is kind of shaking some things up inside. You know, and I'm always thankful for your messages and other things that you share to us, even your little hearts that you're putting up right now. God bless you. And let us go forth, not in our strength today, amen, but to go forth in his strength, in the power of his love. Amen. Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. And God bless you, and we love you now. Bye-bye.